nitric oxide. What you can do, though, is you can take the ingredients that the body uses to make nitric oxide, and you can take the ingredients that will stabilize the nitric oxide, prevent it from breaking down, and lasting uh, longer in your body. And so you could do this by taking certain amino acids like arginine and citrulline, and then you can take certain antioxidants like vitamin C, vitamin E, there are many other kinds of antioxidants. And so by taking these different ingredients, these different natural ingredients all at the same time, you will maximize your body's ability to make the nitric oxide. And so that's how you boost your nitric oxide production. In this next part of the American Health Journal, Dr. Ignaro tells us the benefits of using nitric oxide as part of our daily regimen of diet and exercise, as well as how you can learn more about his research the age-proofing of your cardiovascular system, and his three-step plan to a healthier heart, which he explains in detail in his new book, No More Heart Disease. But first, we spoke with Dr. Andrew Myers about the role nitric oxide plays in our body. Nitric oxide is naturally produced by cells that line the arteries, and those cells producing nitric oxide help to control and regulate the blood flow throughout the body. So when the blood flow is regulated, blood pressure can be lowered, muscles can be delivered oxygen and nutrition much more efficiently. So nitric oxide becomes this important chemical mediator in terms of helping the body do what it was meant to do, to perform better, to function optimally, and in many cases, when you have disease or deficiency of NO, you see big problems, like high blood pressure or even heart disease. The benefits of nitric oxide are many, and they focus mainly in the cardiovascular system, but this also impacts on other systems as well. Because nitric oxide can keep your blood vessels healthy by increasing blood flow, what happens is that the nitric oxide makes sure that all the organs in the body receive the normal amount of blood and therefore nutrients and oxygen um, that, that's required. Uh, in addition, nitric oxide can interfere with the blood clotting process, and so it can uh, 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 prevent unwanted blood clotting. You know, when people suffer from a heart attack, in many cases, this is due to a blood clot that develops in the coronary arteries that feed blood to the heart. Uh, by the same mechanism, when a person gets a stroke, this is generally due to the development of a blood clot in the cerebral arteries that carry blood to the brain. And so you don't want this to occur normally. The only time you want a blood clot to occur is when you injure yourself, you get a cut, and you want a clot to form because that forms a plug and prevents the excessive loss of blood. But you don't want those blood clots to occur in a normal uh, inside within an artery in the brain or heart. So nitric oxide is something we make to prevent that unwanted clotting of blood. When nerves stimulate different parts of the body, they do so by releasing a chemical. Well, the major chemical in the brain that is released from many nerves is nitric oxide. And this nitric oxide is well known today to facilitate memory and learning. No question about it. This has been shown in animals, it's been shown in humans. And what we've noted now is that in memory and learning disorders, particularly Alzheimer's disease, there is a deficiency, a marked deficiency in the formation of nitric oxide in those regions of the brain that regulate memory and learning. And in fact, a number of pharmaceutical companies are developing drugs that stimulate nitric oxide formation in those regions of the brain. And the early clinical studies show that if you boost nitric oxide formation in the brain, you can restore memory and learning. So I think there's hope for everyone uh, who's suffering from a memory and learning disorder. Not only does nitric oxide decrease the blood pressure and protect against heart disease and so on, but let's keep in mind one of the major effects of nitric oxide in the body, and that is to function as a vasodilator. This means it's going to widen or relax the arteries, and when that happens, of course, you're going to increase the flow of blood to the other end. Okay. Well, we made an interesting discovery back in 1990 when we showed that the nerves that go to the erectile tissue of men and women actually release nitric oxide as the signaling molecule or neurotransmitter. And before we made that discovery, the neurotransmitter was not known. 
And if you don't know what the nerves are releasing to stimulate a function, it's almost impossible to develop rational drugs to treat a disease. And so once we showed that those nerves release nitric oxide, one of the pharmaceutical companies, of course, uh, developed a big program to look at that and study that. They extended my research further, and voila, they came up with the drug uh, Viagra, uh, which is the first orally available drug that's useful in treating impotence or erectile dysfunction. And so the way Viagra works simply is to enhance or increase the actions of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide is a vasodilator, which means it's going to widen those blood vessels and lower the pressure within the blood vessels. And it doesn't lower blood pressure if the blood pressure is normal. And that's the beauty about the natural substances present in, in our body. The nitric oxide senses when the blood pressure is abnormally elevated. And then it steps in to reduce that blood pressure back down to the normal range, not below normal. And it's the most effective substance we have in the body, the most effective hormone to lower the blood pressure and keep it out of the high range. And it's something that, that you want to do all the time. You want to have sufficient amounts of nitric oxide around all the time to keep that blood pressure uh, down because high blood pressure can lead to a heart attack. The single most common cause of cardiovascular disease is a persistent high blood pressure that the person does not control because that pressure against the arteries will eventually tear apart the cells, rip apart the arterial uh, cells, and this is going to cause irreversible damage to the arteries. This will start the development of uh, a plaque formation, cholesterol buildup in the arteries. This will begin to precipitate uh, blood clotting, which means you can get a blood clot in the heart, which can cause a heart attack. You can get a blood clot in the brain, which can cause a stroke. So nitric oxide is the body's natural way to prevent all of these things from happening. One of the most common causes of a heart attack or a stroke is the development of atherosclerosis, which is nothing more than an inflammatory disease of the arteries. And this comes about when you have cholesterol buildup. In other words, a bad cholesterol, uh, LDL cholesterol buildup will actually cause a change in the structure of the arteries. The blood will begin to clot. There'll be all kinds of debris clinging to one another. And this constitutes the buildup of, of plaque in the arterial wall, which can obstruct blood flow. And, and worse yet, if those plaques become disrupted for any reason, they can travel to different parts of the body and they travel to the brain, you can have a stroke. If they travel to the heart, you can have a heart attack. The way the body protects naturally against the development of high cholesterol is through nitric oxide. Nitric oxide functions to keep the balance of the various lipids in, in the arterial uh, system. So it helps to maintain the good cholesterol and the bad cholesterol at, at healthy levels, okay? And so some of your very famous drugs, and I think everybody's heard of the statin drugs. There are many different companies that make different kinds of statin drugs, and they're great in reducing your bad cholesterol. Anybody who has a cholesterol level of uh, 250 or 300 or, 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 or higher, uh, after taking statins, sometimes that level could be reduced back into the 100 range. And the way those statins work is by stimulating nitric oxide formation in the arteries. So, you know, if you have sufficient amounts of nitric oxide in your healthy arteries, you don't have to take the statin drugs. Nitric oxide